I actually lost the footage of the previous block so I've done another one up to that point and as you can see here we have the shape of the teapot. I've chosen these colours because they're some of the fabrics that look a little bit more like tea although I'm not a tea drinker I confess. Anyway I'm not going to stitch out the motive fill stitches of this one I'm going to show you one of the other options. Now, I've trimmed around here carefully not worried too much about the base of the teapot because we have satin stitches to cover that and we're going to put a piece of fabric over the top because this is just cotton. If you do your base fabric in silk, then you don't have to put fabric over the centre. I think it's better because it seals these edges in and it's easier to cut an outside edge than an inside edge. But that's just my personal opinion. Make this extra special, I've put batting on the back. Just a little square here that's gone over the area which I can see covers the teapot. Without the motive fill stitches will give almost a trapunto effect to the teapot. So your options are to use the base fabric or to cover it with another applique, which is what we're going to do now. Or you can use the motive stitches, you can exclude them. You can put batting on the back to make it more pronounced and curved. And to do this, I've chosen my all-time favourite silk. This is the shot slubby silk which actually forms the background to my website. I have just a little bit of it and I've not been able to buy it again. I'm going to line up these lines here with the edge so that the slubby bits are definitely nice and horizontal and I'm going to show you how I have changed the satin stitches that go around. So let's start and see how it looks. So that is the shape of the teapot. I didn't have to stitch out the surround. It was quite obvious, but these little light running stitches are easy to remove if you're not happy with the placement. Now we're going to do the zigzag ones, which are more permanent. So that is attached nicely and already you can see how you've almost got that curved look to the teapot. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to trim around it and I'm also going to trim off the batting on the back because I don't want unnecessary amounts. There you can see the back, the batting has been trimmed away from the edge and on this side the teapot is whoops the teapot has been trimmed away. One thing else I wanted to point out to you the more of these crazy quilt blocks you make, the more ideas you get. But when I, I was used to cut straight across here, but actually it's a good idea to cut the sides at an angle so that you've got a little bit more fabric there, especially if you're going to be doing a seam. And as you can see, that one goes in the other direction. Now, the next stitch is the motive fill, which we're not going to do. So now we're actually going to be stitching the satin base and the handle of the teapot. Before we'd fill in the, the teapot with the surround of satin stitches which I'll explain how to do so that there's no show through on them. Um, we have to do a little bit of embroidery so I'm going to go through those stages and then explain about the new way of doing the satin stitches.
going to do some more embroidery in white. I've been thinking as about this embroidery and I think I shall change quite a few of the colours of the actual embroidery to more in line with the sort of tea theme that we've got here from the fabrics. We've done the embroidery and now we're going to do the satin work and I'm going to show you the underlay that goes across here for the teapot lid. Now, as you can see, this is the underlay for the satin stitches. And it comprises of an edge stitch and a zigzag. Obviously, if we had a piece of fabric here, we'd be able to look at the edges here and make sure that it was trimmed nicely. Now we're going to do the satin stitches for the teapot. I'm going to stop it there just to show you it, it's done that to those bands. Now it's going to do the underlay for the statin stitches here and you can watch how it will do the edging and the zigzag and then we'll be able to trim any surplus threads. I was wrong there, it didn't do the zigzag. It's going to do the zigzag now and I'm just going to move these threads across because I think the zigzag will catch it. Now. I think you'll agree with me that tidies it all up very nicely. Just a little thread there that it missed. I'm just going to take those ones. I'm going to bring it forward. I'm sorry that I take it off the embroidery unit. So I'm just looking around. There's just a little bit showing there, which I can trim away some out there. And, and do remember, I'm probably not doing this as well as I could because if you take your embroidery and actually swivel it by 180 degrees at each angle you'll see different things as the light catches the stitches. I think I'm happy with that and I'm sure you'll agree we have a nice lot of stitches holding down that fabric. I'm going to take off the white. I'm changing the colours as I go along. Because I did the handle in ecru, then I better do the body in ecru. No, it's not ecru, it's sand, which is Sulky Rayon 508. I probably should have done the teapot all in white. Never mind. Being a perfectionist, I wonder whether I've ever been completely satisfied with any stitch out that I do. Now we're going to do the underlay for this section. Examine it very carefully. We have a thread sticking up over here. There's one I missed on the spout.
is the teapot finished and now there's just embroidery to do which I shall complete and then show you the results and I will be putting an applique dragonfly on here. Interesting to note a couple of things that hopefully show up that this is a white but it absorbs some of the oyster colour of this teapot which is lovely and it does the same over here and this is why you wouldn't believe looking at that and looking at that that it was the same colour thread so it's important to know how your fabric affects the colour of your thread looking quickly at that I can't see a single thread sticking out I'm really happy with that now I know what you're going to ask me I have all my other romantic crazy quilts and this sort of edging is not in them now it will probably be possible to stop and start your machine at the point where the underlay finishes on certain sections but I can't guarantee that in all cases it will just do all the underlay it could be a little bit fiddly but it is possible this underlay is a little bit different it's been designed for this purpose whether I change all my previous quilts and update them um, only time will tell let's see how we go anyway I'm going to finish this off and show you the results next time thank you for watching bye for now